Hello, Identity 5 Gamers. It is time to check out some more IJL matches. That's right, tournament time. It's been a couple days. We're getting back into it. Despite me doing so many videos on, hold on, we just got a gold, wait. And I got Explorer's Book again, so that's just a thousand fragments. Dang. Have I got that three times or just, whatever. Okay, I got excited for nothing. Anyway, as I was saying, um, despite me doing so many videos on the recent tournaments, hey, Frederick, uh, we're still pretty behind since there's literally two tournaments going on and IVT is coming up soon as well. I believe like uh, before top eight is happening this weekend and they're only going to stream top eight. Uh, IVT obviously being the NAEU. Either way, I'm super excited for all the tournaments. I just know that we need to catch up on a lot of them. Uh, also, there is a little reward that you can get here. For those who don't know, there is a little Nightwatch graffiti for Philosopher's Stone. And the way you get this little graffiti here is you go to a site and you input a code. I'll leave both of those in the description below if you want to check them out. Uh, basically, you go onto the site, input the code, and like input your ID for your account, and then you'll get this little uh, sticker for free. So definitely make sure to do that if you want this Philosopher's Stone graffiti. It's very cute. I'm gonna slap it on my night watch. That way I can have some extra drip for my boy. In other news though, something that is interesting is we now have enough uh, to pull for the last two items. I think the cheer and the costume remnants are all that we're missing on the Karomi spaceship plan here. Yep, there we go. And that allows us to get the, um, the uh, little glasses here. Let's see. Oh, what is it? Okay, yeah, here we go. Karomi is sending you a bonus gift. Select your favorite stylish glasses. So you can either get one for Bloody Queen or you can get one for Cheerleader. Now, I don't really play BQs and I do play Cheerleader here and there. So I'm going to get them for Cheerleader. Yep, there we go. Get the glasses for cheer. So yeah, make sure to do this, everybody. Make sure you get your free accessory here since these are worth echoes, but you can get one of them for free. But yeah, I think that's everything to do with the Karomi spaceship event thing. And I think that's pretty much everything that I have to do related with the Sanrio part two event. So yeah, I think we're good on this front. All right, now we're back here to the Liddy Tree thing. Let's get a tattered page, see what we can get for today. Okay, we can do daily login and complete one match, which we have done. Cool, so that should be two for today. Received a new tattered page. Uh, and the line connecting two edges, I see. And then a pattern resembling an arrow changing its form. Gotcha. All right, well, that's two more. We are now halfway through till we get the uh, actual cool sticker here. So yeah, I guess we're gonna have to wait. What is it, two, two more days probably? I don't actually know. Maybe there's like the whole final one in the middle that we have to do. I don't know. I'm not gonna bother asking your friend for help. I think it's just easier if we go through it day by day. All right, let's see here. Now we have the unlock thing. I guess I, did I forget to do day two? I think I forgot to do day two. All right, well, anyway, let's just do three. Oh, yo. Hey, this is when I started playing the game. That's so cool. The Identity 5 Danganronpa V3 crossover. As we face the upcoming class trial and another challenge in the manor, let's delve into the truth of the lie together. Yo, that's so cool, dude. Okay, so I think I forgot to, uh, I think I forgot to check in yesterday, unfortunately, so I don't think I got the spyglass. So I'm gonna have to make sure I stay on top of it for tomorrow. Sorry about that. Still, this is what yesterday was. Um, it was just Zeta, so. Yeah, good job, Zeta. I don't know if we'll be watching them in today's matches, but yeah, we're gonna get into the matches now. Yippee! Here we are. The set we're going to be watching today is going to be between Scars and FAV. Scars with a 1-4 as their score, and FAV with 3-2. We've got Seer, Magician, Acrobat, and Mercenary going up against Ivy for round one. So, something that's interesting about watching these tournaments now. Uh, I got the goofy spawns here. Uh, something that's interesting about this, uh, like this watching these tournaments now is that we now know what the nerfs to Opera and Ivy are going to be. Uh, there's actually a lot of adjustments for characters coming. Um, I think there's like, there's like a postman buff, a fire investigator buff. I think Acrobat's getting adjusted. Not, not like anything crazy for Acrobat. Uh, the, the, a couple of the characters, but Opera, uh, we can talk about the buffs and nerfs here real quick as they're getting into this match. Opera is getting nerfed to her full presence specifically. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, what Opera's full presence does is the little shadows that stay behind that she teleports to, those stick around a little bit longer, and her dashes, her like the, the dash that she does, not, not like just the, the speed that she gets from, but like the initial dash that she does, uh, that goes 20% farther uh, when she's at full presence. So it basically makes her faster because the dashes are pretty fast. And if they go longer, that means your dashes are more consistent. So with that, uh, they're actually taking that part out. The 20% the longer part, they're taking that out. So basically at full presence, Opera is going to be not as fast. So that's pretty good because it's going to balance out Opera a little bit more. 
Uh, because Opera, again, best character in the game, best heart in the game. And it's, it's very, very interesting uh, from my perspective because I have not seen a meta where Opera was not the one in the top. Like when I when I first joined, Opera wasn't allowed in tournaments, but like once I started like really digging into like competitive, Opera like was the hunter. She was the best hunter in the game. So it's it's almost scary to me because I'm, I'm just so, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't say, I, I don't know if I can say I'm new to this game anymore. It's, it hasn't been a year, but I guess like comparatively to a lot of other competitive players who've been around since, you know, year one, year two, I'm very new compared to them. Is what I guess I should be saying. So I, I have not seen a meta where I or where Opera hasn't been the best character in the game, and that that honestly is kind of exciting to me. A little weird though, because it's like we're stepping into new territory. That's not to say that they're gutting Opera completely, but it's going to be interesting to see if uh, you know, Opera Opera's still like round one pick. Like she's def she's definitely probably still the best hunter, but it's going to hurt her a lot. And then for Ivy, she's actually getting tons of nerfs as well. It's crazy how many times this character has been nerfed. Uh, Ivy is getting, I think, more than one nerf. She's getting, like, I think, two or three. First nerf is that uh, the tablets, you know how they take 20 seconds to break after they've been uh, placed? They actually only take 12 seconds to break if somebody is already dead. Kind of like Dream Witch, how you can delete faster when somebody's dead. The tablets actually die faster. Uh, they take 12 seconds to you, for you to be able to break them. And I also think they break in three seconds. So it takes 20 seconds for you to be able to break them, and then, then they'll break in three seconds as opposed to five when somebody's already dead. So kind of just having that Dream Witch sort of uh, comeback factor when somebody's already down. Uh, Seer's doing a great cut here, by the way. Sorry, I'm just kind of rambling on about the buffs and nerfs. Does get the spook onto the Seer and going to hit him there. Uh, gonna just try and make as much distance as possible. Maybe use the auto transition before she can go for her blink. Uh, and then another thing that Ivy was nerfed to was her full presence. Her full presence has a 38 second uh, cooldown, which is basically, you know, the, the it's, it's practically a free hit if used correctly. Um, wow, teleporting there just for like this slightly optimal distance. That's funny. And then, um, it, that, that, that is going up to 45. So they're making the full presence counter uh, be seven seconds longer. So I will not be able to spam it as often, which will allow people to maybe get those heals off, get those final, uh, the, the, those, those final ciphers ready, stuff like that. Uh, she, she is going to teleport out of the seat. I think there was one other adjustment they were making to Ivy. I don't remember. If I remember, I'll uh, share it a little bit later. She does blink down this year. So that was a pretty good kite. Cyphers were definitely being pressured down a little bit, except for the Acrobats. Uh, so yeah, this this is still pretty good, though. That's basically two and a half uh, Cyphers and a forced out blink. That's very, very good. Now, this Ivy is one hit away from full presence, thanks to how long that kite was, about two whole minutes. Uh, so they are about um, around a minute right now, a little over a little over a minute away from uh, I started decoding. But this is looking... I'm going to say like a draw, because this here has an owl to rebound with. Uh, it, all, it all depends on how he uses this owl. The Acrobat is going to come in for the first rescue since he has Tide and Flyo, which is pretty interesting. Uh, so actually, there's two characters with no BT builds. Very, very interesting. Uh, Acro! Okay, I was about to say, you better be careful there, buddy. He's going to bomb, and looks like she's going to actually go after the Acrobat here. Interesting, she wants that double down. Going to force the Acrobat to use up his self-heal, most likely. And now, then we can uh, use the Yithian. Oh yeah, th that's right, the, the final the final nerf to the IV. That's right, okay, there were three nerfs. I talked about the first two. The final one is that the uh, Yith speed is going to be decreased by like almost a meter per second or something like that. I, th I think the Yith travels about like eight, it's like 8.5 meters per second. It's gonna be like 7.6 or something like that. So it's it's almost be, it's, it's like a whole meter slower. Uh, per second, which is pretty crazy. And like when when you when you see it move side by side, you can tell. You can definitely tell. Like it, it has basically been like reduced by 10 to 15 percent of its speed, um, or more. So yeah, that is going to be the down onto the seer thanks to the full presence. Not really much that you can do about that. And they're actually a full cipher behind. Ciphers are looking good, except for that 16 percent cipher. That should be a lot further along. And. Then she can teleport back onto the magician here. He does use the wand. The one piece is real. That's the white beard skin, dude. Oh my gosh, the one piece. I think it's real. <laughs> oh boy. All right, mercenary has to come in for this rescue. There is no more tide, but he has to go for this. Goes for the spook. Doesn't get it. Uh, does, does that on the mercenary? Uh, no terror shock now. No terror shock. The owl, oh, the, the rescue into the instant frame one owl. He is like, I am getting this rebound. Issue is, wait. She just wasted full presence on the mercenary. <gasps> and he's going to try and decode that cypher? The 70, the 96% not the cypher? <laughs> oh, that's funny, dude. You know, he actually could have maybe finished it. That's funny. 
Okay, the other two need to like get over here now. The magician, yeah, the magician needs to get over here like right now, dude. If they if they want any chance of keeping everybody alive for endgame, uh, the issue is Acrobat and uh, Seer bo both do not have borrow time, so that's gonna be a little risky for them. Uh, looks like Magician's gonna want to pop the Cypher and then get the rescue, or maybe get the rescue then pop the Cypher. I'm not really sure. He goes for the wand so he can get that Yith off him. Uh, be careful now. Okay, nice, nice. Ooh, it hit the mercenary. Okay, he elbow pads just so he can pop that Cypher. That's funny. They just want to get that Cypher popped so that they can pop the last one. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. She blinked down to the mercenary. She just says, no, you're not going anywhere, buddy. Thing is, mercenary's not dead on chair. This is a four-person endgame. Wow, Team Scars is doing so good against this Ivy right now. She can still make this a draw, though, because she's sending her Yith to the gate. She can sit on top of the mercenary, who will eventually die. Uh, but yeah, another thing, like the, the Yithians uh, just being able to move slowly, it just means that Ivy's Cypher pressure is going to be reduced by a lot. Uh, and same with the tablets being able to break faster. So yeah, I Ivy is just, it's so interesting how crazy Ivy was like in the test servers. Like I, I don't i don't know how they thought Ivy was balanced on the test servers. Like it was insane. Oh, she got greedy and went for the seer. I mean, the seer's dead on chair, but I guess if they go for the, wait, hold on. That was actually good to get greedy because the seer's dead on chair. You chair the seer, he's dead on chair. You, have, you get a guaranteed draw if you kill the mercenary now. Okay, the one piece is real. Oh, but he get the... Oh, that was a really good one from the mage, but he fly wheels just to get to graveyard. Okay. There's a very small chance he can actually kite out to dungeon. A very small chance. I have no idea where the acrobat is. Where is the acrobat in all of this? I, I literally have no idea where he is. Mercenary's there. Is acrobat must be on like the other side of the map, just, just like chilling over there. Where? He, where? Oh, he is. He's he, okay. Acrobat's at mid. Weird. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, the mercenary's done on chair too. Wait a minute. Scars was doing so well, but then it's a draw and potentially more. This is probably a 3k. I'd say there's even a chance for a 4k. They're they're waiting out detention, but the thing is acrobat, it doesn't matter if it's acrobat. Hmm. Uh you know what's funny is theoretically Ivy could literally just wait with both things. Uh, both things. Bo both of her uh, bodies at the gates. Yep, there's Acro. I feel like you just go for Acro every time. Oh, the mage is right there. Well, she's going for the magician, I guess. Hmm. Okay. Oh my gosh, the micro managing right now. Do you see this? Swap, 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 swap. What the heck? All right. There's there's tablets at both gates. Thing is, like, she's keeping she's keeping tabs on both people. Detention is gone, so Mage can take a hit. Yep. He made that a corruption hit, too. Interesting. Uh, her blink is almost back up. I think this is 4K. Because, again, we're, we're, this is Ivy Law, dude. As long as... Well, I can't say that now. Yeah, no, the Acrobat should be able to get out. 99 on the Mage. Oh, my gosh. She blinked down to the Mage. And I feel like you just chair Mage and then teleport. Nope, she's going to teleport onto Acro. She sees Acro. She calls back the Yith. Leaves the Yith here, walks toward the acro. She's got she's to be careful with that mage, though, because that mage self heals, and, and he just opens up the gate free. Like, she needs to be very careful if she wants to get his acrobat down. She should know that gate's already been worked on, like, a lot. At least I'm pretty sure it was wedding gate that was worked on a lot, right? Or was it the back gate? Ooh. Ooh. Okay, mage is transitioning. Yep. She's actually, this is actually a 4K. It's it's just Ivy Law. It's just Ivy Law, dude. It's a 4K. She had the like craziest detention comeback. They had four people alive at endgame. Four. This is how good Ivy's endgame is, dude. She, I mean, in the hands of Chikin as well. Extremely good. Okay, so the mage can't get back up. The acrobat's gonna have to do his thing. They use up their self heals, and that is GG's. Yep. You've got the tinnitus, your full prez is almost back. You just spook the acrobat, and then he dies to full prez. Yep, that's it, full prez. 59 though, 59. Not quite enough, but it doesn't matter, it's it's over. It's a lost cause. He bomb right here, oh, no bombs. Boom, that's it, GG. That's insane. FAV, dude, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love watching Team FAV, they're one of my favorite teams to watch. 
but dang. Sheikin with an insane comeback. And I, here's the thing. Well, the Ivy nerfs, that, that probably will matter. That will definitely matter in the grand scheme of things. She's been nerfed on three different little things just for this round. She has had three waves of nerfs, by the way, everybody. Three whole waves of nerfs. And this is her fourth wave. Like, could you imagine Ivy? Like, with her, with, like, test server Ivy. When she's still... Remember, tablets used to take, like, 40 seconds to break. 40! That's insane! Well, it's time for round one, second half. We've got Journalist, Mercenary, Norton, and Puppeteer. And it's going to be Opera Singer. I feel like uh, Ivy maybe... Well... This is tricky. This is tricky. Because here's the thing. Norton is good against Ivy, but not so good against uh, Opera Singer. And Puppeteer is good against both. Mercenary is good against both. Well, I say good against, but he's Mercenary. He's kind of good against everybody, but he does have his weaknesses. You know, Opera Singer can definitely chase down a Mercenary. And then Journalist. Like, we, we, we've seen Journalist being played, like, a, uh, here and there. I think it's because it's Red Church. Jur yeah, see, she's spotted in your graveyard. Journalist is actually really good in graveyard. Especially against something like an opportunity. Ooh, opportunity to cut her off from graveyard though. Uh, the thing is, on on a map like Red Church, there's a lot of pallets where it's kind of like you have to go through them, and there's no way you can really just like just straight up mind game them. So journalist is actually, I would say this is probably journalist's best map. I would say this and Arms Factory are probably her best maps. I don't know, because if there's a lot of like corridor pallets, like she she excels in corridor pallets because she puts the doofy there and then just like runs through the corridor. It's very good. That's why Graveyard is just all corridor pallets where it's just like two walls and pallet that like is like the spot to go through the wall. But like if you put the Doofy there, it's just basically a giant wall for like however long the Doofy wants to stay there. But yeah, we got Puppeteer mid broken, Norton in the middle, Mercenary at the wedding area, and then uh, Journalist at God Kite. Might take, might take first cut on the drones. Could go for Prospector. Could go for Mercenary. I feel like anybody but the Puppeteer is probably a good first chase here. Ooh, we have quite the aggressive build here from the uh, the Opera Singer. Uh, we have Abnormal Detention and Trump Card. Interesting. It's going to be Tide, Knee Jerk, Puppeteer, Bar Time, Knee Jerk, Journalist, and Prospector. We've got Bar Time, Tide, Mercenary. So pretty standard stuff. I, I feel like the Norton would have had Flywheel, but it's fine. Because he's gonna be acting more as a kiter in this in a game like this. And I'm gonna go straight for the journalist. Let's see, let's see how she uses her illusions here. I'm actually really curious to see. Uh, because journalist is probably gonna set up a first doof right here. Yep, there we go. Again, that, that's another good one. Oh, I guess she just wanted to make her waste one of them. Interesting. I guess that's fine. Um Yeah, you see you see you see how opera is like doing these dashes here? Yeah, the dashes the, the dashes would go longer uh, at full presence. But uh, yeah, she's still she's still pretty fast. Like the thing is, like just because they're nerfing her full presence does not mean that Opera is going to be weak by any means. She's still going to be probably the best hunter in the game. It's just uh, the gap between her and the other hunters is going to. But a full 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 presence would have reached that dash. By the way, full presence would have reached that dash right there. By the way, Brio's kind of lost it right there. But full full presence would have reached that. But now with the new offer, uh, Opera nerfs, uh, which if they go through, if they go through, these are on the test server, so they're still testing it. But if they go through with these nerfs. Um, then Opera will not be able to make that dash ever. So it's gonna. Uh, opera Singer players are gonna have to use to get. Are gonna have to get uh, used to the regular dashes even at full presence, which I imagine is gonna be pretty frustrating. It is gonna be the puppeteer uh, taking the first kite. Lewis is ready, and he's gonna be able to get to this pad over here. Let's see. Snap your neck, buddy. Snap. Yep. Ooh, the instant Lewis right afterward. Wow. Okay. Nice work. But she did opt to hit the Lewis there. Oh, I don't think he needed to Lewis. He did not need to Lewis there. Okay. Yeah, I, I think his puppeteer is kind of clipped. He vaults early. Oh, pal, mind game. He vaults, and he dies. Yeah. And in a situation like that, you basically have to make you have to make the opera commit, dodge her hit, and then vault the pallet. Because if you vault the pallet, like she's just she's just gonna wait and hit you. The the, the all the powers in the 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 opera singer right there. Uh, that's still that that was a really good rotation from the entire team. It took it took Burio a long time to find somebody, and the mercenary is already here. Just goes for the. That's a really early rescue. I don't know if I agree with that. That's a really 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 early rescue. I know it's a free rescue, and mercenary gets out of there undamaged, but like, it's a free rescue, but the. It's it's 20 you you missed out on 20 to 25 seconds of decoding for free For your other two teammates. That's 
I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Hmm. I guess I guess they're prioritizing. Oh no, never mind. No, it's it's FAV. No, FAV doesn't. Yeah, okay. I guess it's fine. I guess it's fine. Cause the thing is, FAV can lose some people. All they need is like a one escape. If they get a one escape, they're fine. Cause literally, uh, Chi King got the 4K for them. So all all the survivors are looking for is just one out. I mean, obviously you want to get more. You want to get as many people out as possible. But as long as you win this round, that's that's good enough, right? That's good enough. Um, so they're probably just playing it super super safe. I, I, that's probably what they're doing. Uh, Puppeteer actually just instantly goes down again. Uh, kind of unfortunate for our boy Matthias here, but uh, Lewis just wasn't ready enough, I guess. He was ready, just not ready enough. Uh, and the Cyphers are honestly a little behind, I can't lie. And the Mercenary is injured too. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I, I still feel like that initial, that initial rescue was way too soon. Especially since she used Abnormal. She used Abnormal to try and catch up. And, you know, it might work out. It all, it all depends on how these next kites go. She is at full presence. Okay, there's one stun. Nice. Two more magnets to work with. And she's going to opt to go back for some reason. Okay. Not going to chase after the prospector, which I feel like is the... Oh, maybe it was to bit out the mercenary? Well, she does find the mercenary. He has a couple more elbow pads to spam right here. Let's see. Oh, she just flies through that pallet. Oh, my gosh. Not a care in the world. I don't know if Dacho was expecting that. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, time to chair. Yep, time to chair. Here we go. Yep, gonna chair out over here because it's a really good chairing spot. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I, I love chairing on this chair because it's pretty hard to rebound from this chair. It doesn't always show up. It's it's like luck based if that chair is there. But I that's probably, that's probably one of my favorite chairs on this map because it is one of the hardest chairs to rebound from because uh, there's just nothing. Okay, gonna abnormal that. Ooh, they're basically a whole cipher behind now. Okay. The abnormal might actually help out here. Drillis dropping a very early uh, illusion, which I feel like was not even worth it. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why she did that. And there's another one. Okay, tries to hit the journalist, but oh, let's go, Doofy Light. Hey, respect me. I am the owner of the manor. You have to respect me. Oh, they they rescue right before half. That's crazy. That is crazy. I, I, were they chair stalling? I'm not sure. Oh, journalist takes a hit, and that is her last doof. Yep, she is now out of doofs, and that is going to be GG's for the journalist, yep. Dang, dude, poor Apai. Poor Apai could not get away from there. All right, they are healing up the mercenary, which makes sense, but he's been hit, what, one, two, just twice, right? I think, yeah, just twice, so he won't, he, he's not going to heal. Yeah, he, he's already healed. Had he been hit, like, two or, two or three more times, that was going to be a really, really slow heal. Now, the issue here is that Burio with that double abnormal is actually catching up a lot onto the decoding. Uh, they they need to open up a whole new cipher, and uh, their their journalist cannot rebound, so that's very very dangerous. And she's just gonna go after the the prospector here. Interesting. Mercenary's going for the rescue, but will she go for the prospector or? Hmm. Okay. Stun. Very nice. Very nice. Oh no! Not enough patience from Narisu there. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, it looks like it looks like she's just gonna prioritize going after the prospector to minimize the decoding as much as possible. Yep. Because as long as long as you waste everybody's resources, big stun, big stun, big stun. Oh, switching targets. Very smart. Very smart. Yeah, that makes sense. Waste his magnet. No more. No more stuff on the drone. The drone is literally dead. She literally can't do anything. So she might as well just die in a corner. Tree kite. Tree kite. Tree kite. Tree kite. Tree kite. Yep. She bought like an extra second by going around the tree. You know, very nice. Uh, but this is going to be her second chair, and the cipher is not quite yet ready. They have all three cyphers worked out. They actually, this actually might be a 4K. They had a really solid lead, but that abnormal two different times was kind of crazy. Again, I really, really, really do think Mercenary should have bought more time for decoding, because it seems like they're fine when it comes to healing. It's it's just the decoding. They just, they just. I I really I really think the first rescue just should not have happened that fast. I don't know, dude. I mean, again, they are the pros. They know better than I. But you would have bought so much time to decode. Like, I feel like one hit for 40 seconds of decoding is better. Because, like, you know, you, it takes 30 seconds for a chair to go up to half. So you, you go in around, like, the 20-second mark, maybe to rescue, like, 20. But that's 20 seconds of decoding for two other people on the four-person team. And, yeah, that, that honestly, you really could have used that 40 extra seconds of decoding right here. You really could have used it, because now 
you're in a very unfavorable position because your journalist is dead and now there's only two people left and abnormal is still in play i mean it's not going to do much i think the, the the third abnormal only does like what 20 percent 15 percent it's it's really 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 slow but uh yeah that abnormal actually helped out so much that was definitely the play the abnormal opera singer yeah Okay, now Mercenary is juggling two different items, but it's basically GG's at this point. It's another 4K, which is kind of crazy to say. It doesn't feel like it should have been a 4K. Again, I, I really, really am adamant that the Mercenary should not have rescued that early. I don't know why he did that, because, like, I know it's a free rescue. I know it's a free rescue. But everything in my body is just saying that that wasn't right. Okay, so if Mercenary is going to kite this well, Prospector should literally have just self-healed. I know he's not self-healing, so he can, like, save it. But the Mercenary is doing such a good kite. In hindsight, like, the Prospector should just get up. Like, unless you want this Mercenary to kite for four whole minutes, it's not happening. Yo, this Mercenary kind of crazy with it. Ooh, scary. I thought he was going to get Terra Shock there. I think, I think he might have if she just instant swung. Okay, well, there's the first hit. Prospector's just not, he's just not gonna get up. He's just not gonna get up. Okay. Yo, this Merc, okay. Oh, wait, what? Oh no, he, okay, for a second. For a second I thought the Prospector got up. It was just the Mercenary's uh, health coming into, yeah. Yo, this Merc. And he, oh, that's a Terra Shock. Yeah, rip, rip, rest in peace. Yep, that's it. And they're gonna do the strategy of not using their self heals, which makes sense. Um, are we gonna share the Merc? I think we are gonna share the Merc. Or are we just gonna drag him back to where the prospector was? I think we need to drag back strat. Yep, 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 yep. We're doing this strategy. We're doing this strategy. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, I mean, we we've seen this strategy work what one time ever, maybe for the survivors. It's whenever the hunters go for a strat like this, it usually works out in uh, in the hunters' favor. But man, is it really corny. Yep, Merc goes down. Uh. Um, yeah, I think I might just skip to the ending. We all know how this is going to end, right? All right, well, she couldn't find the Prospector. And I think she's going to share the Mercenary here. Yeah, you share the Mercenary, which forces the Prospector to get back up. Because, uh, you know, he's about to expire. So now now you can just go try to find the Prospector. Um, so there's a chance. There's a chance, but she has tinnitus. And the dungeon is in between him and her. Oh, my gosh. It, she's literally cutting off the dungeon. And the second she picks up on his trail, which she has... Yep, that's GG. Tis GG. I mean, he has three magnets. He has three magnets in a dream to make this possible. Let's see. Oh, but there's the warp. Cutting him off again. Oh, my gosh. Cutting him off again. Shove. And down we go. Yep, down we go. I appreciate FAV fighting to the bitter end, but man, I just... You shouldn't have rescued that early with the mercenary. That's all I can think of, dude. Just don't rescue that early. Buy that, buy, take the hit and buy that extra 20 seconds of decoding and you're good. All right, moving on to round two, first half. It is currently all drawed up. So we are going to see a guaranteed round three. We've got cheerleader, prospector, aeroplanist, mercenary going up against most likely Ivy here. Uh, if they ban the opera, it's Ivy. If you ban the Ivy, it's opera. We know this dude, we're used to this. So the spawns are pretty standard. Cheer shacks, uh, prospector and Ivy near small bow, aeroplanist, big bow, and then mercenary near big rock. Likely going to be chasing the cheerleader first. We usually see IVs chase cheerleaders first. Pretty much get them to use up their beep beeps after the, uh, you teleport onto them. And then you can kind of just uh, do your IV thing where you wait for the spook and then blink down for the first target. It's it's very simple. It's very simple what IV's game plan is early game. It's just wait for corruption, blink, and that's your down. Ooh, but it looks like uh, Scars is prepared for this because they actually are running full kite build cheerleader. Uh, we've also got Flywheel Tide Aeroplanist, Bar Time Flywheel Norton, and then Bar Time Tide at Mercenary. Okay, uh, Ivy's rocking the standard Blink Detention Insulin. So yeah, Scars really just wants to get one out here, it looks like. They are very, very scared of this Ivy, which makes sense. We, we, we all know how strong Ivy has been recently. Um, and is going to be sending out the Yith toward the Mercenary while walking toward the Chitter. Yep, this makes sense. Just pressure down these Cyphers as quickly as you can. And... Let's see. Oh, calls back the... Okay, now now we're gonna probably possess the cheerleader near Shaq so she can't loop Shaq for a while. Here we go. Do your thing, Yithian! <laughs> Bro, I... Whenever I hear people call it the Yithian, it's so funny. It's... I, all, all I hear or all I picture is that freaking nerd emoji. You know the one, right? <laughs> the freaking... <laughs> 
<laughs> this is so stupid. But like, I, it was like, just call it Yith, right? Everybody just calls it Yith. But when it's just Yithian, I don't know. The Yithian! I've been possessed by the Yithian! I don't know, it just, it just has that nerd emoji energy to me. I don't know. Anyways, present, uh, gonna be pressuring down middle cypher, actually, with a mercenary as well. Still chasing the chiller. Blink is gonna be up in three, two, one. Blink is ready. And cyphers are... Eh, they're okay. They're okay, yeah. You gotta use that BB just to get as much as is possible. Look out for the spook. What the? Oh, but? Oh, I thought she would've, mm, okay. I thought she would've maybe flywheeled there, but yeah, I guess there's no point, because you're flywheeling out in the open. Honestly, that's, yeah, that's, that flywheel, if, if she flywheeled there, it would've done nothing. That, that, that would've been a really bad flywheel. So you can save the flywheel for the blink. The issue is it's really hard to uh, blink predict an Ivy. Blink predicts are already really, really difficult to do, but blinks on Ivy specifically are incredibly difficult. Uh, is she gonna, okay, yeah. It's it's because you have the Yithian on it, so you can see her. Oh my gosh, I just said Yithian the full thing. Does that mean I am the nerd emoji? I'm like the embodiment of the. Oh, I think she, was she baiting out the flywheel there? I thought she, I thought she was just gonna do it. I thought Chiki was gonna let it rip, but no. Gonna hold on to it. Another beep beep is used. Okay, Chitter with a lot of distance right now. I'm not actually sure where the basin is. I wasn't looking, uh, but we're gonna be slow right here. Not getting spooked. Blink flywheel. Oh no, flywheel. I th I think Chitter could have flywheeled there. I think you could have flywheeled and you could have made it uh, to the to the window. Though there's a chance she wants to save it for a rebound kite because that that was a pretty long kite already, and you have both your knee jerks ready. So yeah, I, I would I would say uh, probably save it for a rebound isn't a bad idea. Uh, the ciphers are looking pretty good. Two are finished, one at 87 and two are at 30. These are actually really really good ciphers. That chiller did an absolutely beautiful kite. Possessing the mercen or not mercen the prospector there. Mercenary is right here. Possess the mercy. Yeah, she knows you're there, buddy. She knows you're there. Oh, 60. Okay, nice, nice. Oh. Opting to hit the mercenary so he can't rescue a second time. Does she, does she auto spook? Wait, why are we switching targets to the mercenary? Oh, she's gonna. Nice. Oh, what? Oh, that's so unfortunate, dude. He had so much. Because he was getting greedy, he had so much corruption that the, the magnet didn't do anything there. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That, that was that was a good play though, but he still took, took the hit, unfortunately, for the prospector. Gonna be teleporting back to the cheerleader. You know she's over there, right? You know she's over there. Yithin coming from behind. Oh, she's gonna try and corner. Oh, wait, Cheekin one step ahead. Ooh, yo, Cheekin is actually so smart with it. Okay, nice, nice. Spook the cheerleader. She's dead here, actually. What? Yo, because if that was me, that was hitting. Nah, because if that was me. That was hitting every time. Like, that was a good flywheel, don't get me wrong. But, like, she charge attacked. I don't know, dude. Cause it, uh, that was... It, ah! <laughs> if, that, if I was that cheerleader, bro, that was gonna hit me. Every time, dude. Every time. Cypher's basically primed, though. She's gonna go for the Cypher now. The Norton is on it, though. He has another magnet set up. Yep, instant magnet. Yep, yep. That's, again, that's that's the strategy of the instant... Oh, unfortunate. But yeah, that's the strategy of the instant magnet, where you just drop it down where she teleports, and then you can charge up your next magnet. Okay, another another reason why Norton is good against uh, Ivy, just because the resource management is so good. Now, she is cheering on the last Cypher, and everybody, except for the Aeroplanus, is injured. The issue is, Aeroplanus is really, really risky to go for this rescue, because he does not have borrowed time. Not that Ivy knows that right now, but... There's a, there's a chance if she sees the flywheel and then the tide, she'll know. So I think the airplane just cannot flywheel here, or else you're gonna give the Ivy too much information. You you can't flywheel. You cannot flywheel. Okay, she hits the Norton. That's fine. Do not if if the airplane is flies in front of her though, she'll know she'll know he has no BT, and that's very dangerous. Um, along with the cheerleader, she should know that the cheerleader also has no BT. So her target here should actually be the cheerleader, but she looks it looks like they're just gonna pop right in front of her face. Yeah, pop right here. Yeah, they're just gonna pop. Wow, so she didn't opt to go for the cheerleader who she knew had borrowed time. That's interesting. Okay. And she full... Oh, she wastes full presence on nothing. And the Charles, he gets to hover away. And the cheerleader refreshed him. Oh my gosh. He just used two jetpacks for an insane amount of distance. What the... Okay, and the Ivy actually got up pretty quick. What the heck? I guess she was walking in a straight line that entire time she was on the if. The if <laughs> And we find out the cheerleader. Possessed cheer. Is she dead on... No, cheerleader... She, no, she's not, she's not even dead on chair. Yeah, she's not even dead on chair. Wait a minute. 
Okay, teleporting to the Merc. He elbow pads away. Yo, all these characters that can just like pull distance immediately. This is 100% an IV comp. Because Merc, elbow pad, Prospector, Magnet, Cheerleader, Beep Beep, and Aeroplane is, uh, with the jetpack. They can all just like boom, get all that distance instantly. She's setting up the if. The if, Ian. I'm sorry. I'm, I don't know why I keep doing that, bro. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's a dead Merc. Yeah, that's a dead Merc. All right. Well, I mean, Ivy's endgame is really good. We've seen this. We have seen this. We know how good her endgame is. She literally has tablets set up freaking everywhere, dude. But it looks like she is going to get the corn gate open. Mercenary's going to go down. Yeah, Sora's going to get that gate open, the, the Prospector here. Uh, throw a magnet, throw a magnet, throw a magnet. Not going to opt to throw a magnet. Okay, I guess he's getting away from the gate. He doesn't want to escape yet in case he has to help up his teammates. Oh, wait a minute. That might, that might bite him in the butt, though. Hold on. Ooh. No, he's good. He's good. He's good. 58 isn't enough. Unless he looks back at her, which he should not do. Wait, the dungeon's right there. The dungeon is literally right there. She spooks 98 on the Prospector. Oh, my gosh. The detention's almost detention's almost over, but everybody's like a half, so I don't know. I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, They're going to get that other gate open. Hold on now. Ivy, wait a minute. They're literally just waiting out detention, dude. Okay, teleporting to the cheerleader now. 55 because she beep beeped. Oh, she beep beeped so she was able to get out quicker. Very nice. And she teleports to nobody? Wait, why did she teleport over here? I'm not sure. Okay, at this point you need to just kill one because they're doing really well right now. They're healing at the freaking gate. What is this? All right, they're just gonna force these two out. Okay, nice. It's a, it's a guaranteed draw at this point. Wait a minute. They're in a position for a four escape. Oh my gosh, they actually are. They, they literally are. They're in a position for a four escape. Chitter can get the gate open. He throw a magnet. Oh my gosh. She, she's, she's gonna, she's gonna. Oh, that was a good blink. That was a good blink. That was a really good blink. That was a really, cause he, he was gonna stun and then fly. I think he could have just fly with it, honestly. I, th I think he could have straight fly with it. I don't know. That was a good blink. At least at least you didn't get four escaped. At least you didn't get four escaped. I guess you can say that. Dang, dude. Moving on to round two, second half. We've got Acrobat, Mercenary, Prospector, and Psychologist. A very strong IV team once again. Very nice to see Prospector come back into the meta. I always love watching Prospector. He's annoying as heck to phase because he just spams his magnets and he gets... Depending on how, lo how long the match can go, he can get like so many freaking magnets. And he can be a pain in the neck. But, um... He's, he, I can't deny, he's insanely fun to watch. I, I absolutely love watching Norton. And speaking of characters I love watching, here is a character I'm not super crazy about. We got Wax Artist. They banned Melly? Why'd you ban Melly? Yo, that's a personal attack versus me, Mirai. What is that? I am, I'm crying, bro. <laughs> I mean, I guess uh, they, they know FAV has a really good Melly player up high, so maybe that's why. I don't know, dude. I just don't feel like banning Melly is that necessary if you're playing Wax. All right, this is a really weird spawn because we've got Prospector and uh, Psychic Small Boat, Acro and Shaq, and then Mercenary at Big Boat? I feel like you'd rather put the Merc where Psych is and put your Psych at Big Boat so she can safely decode and then whistle to her teammates while Prospector or Acro take the kite. That's really weird. I'm confused. I mean, maybe they don't want their mercenary getting targeted. Uh, but why in Big Boat? Like, what? That's so weird. I am very, very confused. We're going to see... Wow, Bar Time Flywheel on the entire team except for uh, Merc with Bar Time Tide. And then Wax, bro, is bringing Warp, Detention, and Trump Card. So, yeah, we see we see Warp um, being used a lot on Wax Hearts because he can get early game rotated. And the Warp kind of, you know, puts that to rest. Uh, however... Another thing that is getting nerfed for Hunters is Warp. Warp is actually getting nerfed. It's not a crazy nerf, but it is a nerf. Uh, the initial cooldown for Warp right now is 40 seconds from the start of the match. However, it's going to take 50 seconds now. So it's going to match completely with Teleport. Teleport has a 50 second initial cooldown, and then it's uh, 100 after um, uh, after you've used it. And that is the same with Warp. Warp is going to have the exact... Dang, they're sitting on their screen for a long time. All right, they're finally getting into it. What the heck? That I had to skip ahead like three minutes. I was about to just be yapping on the freaking character selection screen for like three minutes. And dang, he's already on the Acrobat. What? Like frame one. Kokichi is already taking the kite. Oh my gosh. Okay, you're gonna... Oh, gonna go through there. Okay. Wait, what the? Slow bomb? Nice. Okay, he's gonna be slow. 
Uh, let's see. Well, he's, he, it is Acrobat and Shaq. This is the thing. It is Acro and Shaq. So you're going to go through the window. Wax is going to wax it off. Oh, he's not going to wax it off. Okay, that's weird. Oh, now he's going to wax it off. Okay. Break the pallet. Now Acro has to transition. Or just use Bomb for straight distance. I guess that's fine. Straight distance so you can keep breaking out of sight. That also works. Um, he's going to transition out, out over here. I don't know if you should go over here. Hmm. I mean, you have some walls to work with, but you only have a firebomb, and he just straight firebombs. Hello? I am confused. Why is he just straight? I mean, I guess the whole point is he's just trying to, like, break line of sight, and that's the whole thing. Because you don't want you don't want to give the, ac the, the wax stars any time to hit you. It shows he's, he's out of resources now. He only has his flywheel. And he did red light him here a little bit. Nice. Good work from the freaking wax. But yeah, see, the second the second you don't have you break you don't break line of sight, okay, no wax. Okay, that's good, that's good. But he's got 84 wax. Um Flywheel? No flywheel. Okay, that's fine. Bonk. Ooh, that sucks. That sucks. Look at all that distance got nothing. I don't like how fast wax starts attack recovery is. It's it's way too fast. Nice flywheel. I think. Wait, why flywheel there? I, I think a pie is just not like trying to file the wax. He's just trying to file for straight distance. Drops a pallet. He's gonna get hit here because of how long Waxar stun is. Insanely long. That that dude Waxar can go like to the store, get all of his groceries, and like literally pick up his like kids from the freaking I don't know school or whatever, and then go to the gym and then like come back and you're still stunned the entire time, bro. I don't even know. Literally, dude. Okay, ooh, nice elbow pad from Merc. Have to, uh, he's gonna try and stall it out here, but nice stun. Free rescue, okay. It's a bit of an early rescue, but oh, okay. I mean, he stunned the mercenary in for what? But yeah, like, you can't, look, you can't do anything. Like, without resources, you really can't. <laughs> it just accumulates so fast, dude. I don't understand. Like, Wax is such a hard hunter to kite. That's how you just see the Acro just spamming his resources, because like, if you don't, I mean, I might, that might just be the mentality is just like, it doesn't matter how many resources you are, just spam, 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 because you can't kite wax. He's not a kiteable hunter. I mean, he is a, he's a kiteable hunter, but like, I don't know, dude. I don't, I don't, I don't, it's just rotation and spamming your items. Oh, wax. What is, what is, what is wax first? You know, it's funny, they are cypher rushing him. He has, he literally did get cypher rush. Uh, now this is kind of dangerous here because Actually, no, it's not. He doesn't have hot wax. For a second, I thought he had inso. Um, he hasn't. He hasn't got an opportunity to use his trick. Oh, Merc! What are we doing, bro? What are we doing? Oh my gosh! It's okay. I would have been TS too. Okay. He's just. He, he's becoming a wall for the acrobat. That's funny. You know, with even though he's pretty much dead. Okay. Well, uh, this is looking really. Oh, okay. Oh, wait. What? Okay. So they pop, but he wasn't even like gonna go for hot wax. Okay. Acrobat's fly was almost back up. Let's see if he can use it well here. Vault the pallet and take 60 freaking wax because yeah, why not? Um, he's gonna have to flywheel wax if he wants any chance. Oh, he's just gonna break, uh, just break line of sight until you're dead. Flywheel? No flywheel. Interesting. I would have at least tried. Interesting. Okay, Psyche is gonna whistle to the mercenary here so that the mercenary can have full health. Um, yep, there we go. And then they can just get out. Yeah. He can teleport. Teleport here. TP. Yep. Mercenary can body block. Mercenary can body block. Hits the Merc, and they get out. A three escape. Another draw. Wait, that's another draw, basically. What the heck? Three escape on both sides. The set is drawed up again. Oh my gosh. This is quite a close set. And speaking of draws, for round three, we've got Yami here. Yami, very famous for his Bonbon. Bon. His Bonbon bon actually is built different. Yeah, I, I always talk about how cringe and boring Bonbon bon is, in my opinion. But Yami Bonbon bon is built different. He's an aggressive Bonbon, bon, and his bomb chains are actually, like, really, really cool to watch. Uh, but the server team is going to be Dancer, Embalmer, Anti, and uh, Mercenary. A pretty aggressive team, I would say. Uh, wait a Oh, wait, what the? Wait, they banned Gamekeeper? And they, they want to take the... They'd rather have the Ivy over the Gamekeeper. Wow, okay. If, or I guess Scar, Scar's pretty scared of the Gamekeeper, huh? I mean, does Yami, does Yami, I guess Yami does play Gamekeeper. Hmm. I mean, now you have to deal with the Ivy. I don't think we've seen Yami's Ivy, though, have we? Okay, spawns are looking pretty standard. We've got nobody in Shaq. I guess, I guess Shaq, they want people to rotate to, because it's a pretty safe area. Yeah, but Merc, Swan, Godkite, Dancer, Mid, Anti, Near Moongate, and then Embalmer in the factory. So, oh yeah, that, there's another, um, 
And I guess there's a nerf to Embalmer coming. It's a very, very small nerf, but uh, whenever Embalmer uses his coffin and he has that little like few seconds of invincibility, uh, I, he can actually gain corruption. I believe currently at the moment, uh, he cannot gain corruption while he has that invincibility. Uh, against Ivy's tablets, but now he will be able to gain corruption. So that is, that is like a very very small nerf to Embalmer and a very 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 small buff to Ivy. Um, but it's, it's not it's like it's minuscule to the point where it barely matters. But it's more just like a hey this makes sense so why don't we do it kind of thing. Uh, so we're gonna see Bar Time Tide Mercenary Full Kite Build Aesop Bar Time Flywheel on Dancer and Antisquarian, while the Ivy's got the standard Blinko Detentiono Inso. Yep. <laughs> The det detentiono doesn't really detenno detentiono. It doesn't have a nice ring to it. I'm sorry. I'll shut up now. Well, actually, I can't because I have to commentate. Right. Um. Sorry. I forgot how to film YouTube videos, even though I've been doing this for almost six years. Anyways, we've got uh the Yith going after Merc, while Ivy's uh, gonna send her main body after the uh embalmer here. Okay. I don't know if that was really necessary. I feel like it could have waited there because now that tablet isn't on the cipher and Mercenary can decode freely. Uh, oh, Embalmer dropping down. Teleport onto the Embalmer. Okay, 25. Mm, that's fine. That's fine. Because you, you can go for a, a spook here. I feel like you should have tried to auto spook him. Oh, no spook. Okay, he is looking at you a little bit though. 30. 30 and counting. Wait, hold on. That corruption's rising a bit. Hold on now. Sore. You gotta be careful. Dropping the pallet. Okay, 37. It's, oh, it's only danger. He only's in the danger zone once he hits 60. He's fine, as, he's fine as long as he stays under 60. Now he just, he just pallet spamming the IV. Dang, that is some fast power breaking. What the heck? Sheesh, that must be like up. Do you have, that has to be up. Ooh, flywheel maybe? Flywheel's to the pallet, nice. Ooh, and she respects it, okay. Oh, get got, get got you bot. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Watch out for auto spook. Oh my gosh. You know, it's funny I call him a bot, but you know, that's just like the, it's just, it's just what happens, bro. It's just, that's just what happens. That's just Ivy in a nutshell right there. Cause you can't look behind you. So she's just red, red lights for free. Okay. So that was a really good play from the Ivy. I don't know why I called you a bot, so I apologize. My sincere apologies. I just like the word bot cause I think it's funny. <laughs> Anyways, he is going to just instant cough in here. That makes sense. That checks out. Cause now, now you have factory to kite in and all the ciphers are being undisturbed because the Ivy Ooh, there's boxes set up here too. Interesting. Only one though. Why is there a fast box set up? I'm confused. There's a fast box set up in a freaking area where it's like, that's weird. Oh, she can't teleport to it. She opts to blink down. What? Um, I mean that saves you time because you couldn't. She she couldn't teleport down because she couldn't see it. She should have backed up. Uh. Dude, this embalmer is just kind of kiting like crazy. Spook here, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But he still makes that vault, and he's gonna he's gonna go to the pallet now. And Ivy, yeah, he still she, he still has a lot of distance on this Ivy right now. She's positioning the Yith in a really good uh, area, but look at the ciphers, dude. Oh my gosh, is this embalmer about to five cipher kite? What is the? I mean, with his ability, of course, but still. This is why embalmer is so good on this map, dude. Embalmer is just such an aggressive character. I swear. Oh, he's such an annoying character. Like, even against... I, like, I mean, Yami hasn't been pressuring down these ciphers. At this point, I feel like Bonbon bon might have been better. But I guess you can't you can't play Bonbon bon into a into an embalmer. Hmm, maybe they know. That was almost a five-cipher kite, bro. That was That's basically a five-cipher kite, because by the time it's in the chair, that cipher's going to be ready. The only issue is that he has no BT. That's literally the only issue. Otherwise, he's fine. The mercenary is going to have to... He's going to have to use, like, two elbow pads to get in here, though. That's the one thing. It is a full prez Ivy. He does get spooked. Yeah, you've got, you're gonna have to use some level pads to get in here, bro. You gotta, yep, there's the first level pad. He's coming on in. All right. Oh, dang, he's here fast, sheesh. Okay, another spook under the Merc. And, uh, they might just wanna go for like an instant pop the second they save, cause you have Tide to work with, okay. Nice. Now he can't go for, he has a coffin, but he can't really use said coffin. Unless, unless she switches targets, the coffin is basically used. So she is going to position the Yith near the Dancer, which is good. Uh, she does have a fast box to kind of rotate away from here. Yep, there we go. Another reason why Dancer is good against Ivy is she can get out of the range of the tablets faster if she has a fast box placed down. Ooh, okay, just going to go straight for the Embalmer then. Yep. Uh, bonk. 
There we go. That should be a dead embalmer. But now they can work on the gates. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. She's getting aggressive. Yami's going to get aggressive here. Breaking that fast box. Very good. Keeping the Yith on the embalmer. Oh, or not. Hmm. You're giving that embalmer a chance to self-heal, even though he's dead on chair. Okay, so now she has to go back for the embalmer. Yeah, you can't, you can't let that embalmer self-heal. He's dead on chair. You have to kill him. The, the issue is... Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be tricky because... The other star was just gonna all get out the other gate. Uh, wait, what the? Why are they all at middle? What the heck? Oh no, they're not. Okay, I was I was confused. Okay, only one person's at middle. Who the heck is at middle? Oh, it's the, oh the dancer's positioning herself to go to dungeon. Oh, I see. Okay, gotcha. I see. I see. Okay, it's open. She gets out dungeon. Yep, she makes it. There we go. And that's another three escape. Wow. Oh, Yami, not too happy about that. You can. You can see it on his face there. Oh, that's a bit unfortunate. Mm. Yeah. I mean, Embalmer's just... Yeah, he's not happy about that one. Uh, Embalmer's tricky, dude. Embalmer's just such an annoying character, especially on Leo's memory. Dang. Poor Yami. It's time for round three, second half. We're going to see Aeroplanist, Mercenary, Prospector, and Cheerleader. But it's probably going to be Ivy again. And the reason for that is they're banning Anne, which I actually do agree with because Anne is such a consistent draw hunter. And if you're confident against the Ivy, which they did do good against, uh... Did they do good against Ivy? Wait. No, they three escaped a wax arse and they got 4k'd by an Ivy. Is that what happened? Or was it Opera? I can't even remember at this point, bro. I think I think they got 4k'd by Opera. That's what it was. So they, must, so they haven't fought. FAV serves have not fought an Ivy then yet. Actually, this is the exact same comp as the second round, right? I think it is. Yeah, Merc, Prospector, Cheer, Aeroplanist. That's the exact same comp that they had. Or was that Scars that had this comp? I don't remember. Somebody ran this, ran this comp last round, bro. My mind is just not be able to keep track of these things, dude. And the builds are quite similar, too. We're going to see Full Kite Build, Cheerleader, Bar Time Flywheel, Prospector, Bar Time Tide Turner, Mercenary. And then Aeroplan is the Bar Time Tide. I think the Aeroplan has had Flywheel Tide last time. And the Ivy's bringing the standard build, as she always does. So I guess we might see her chase the cheater. I mean, we usually see the Ivies go for that. What is with the people rocking the freaking doll accessory? I don't understand. Why does everybody have that freaking doll? I don't know. There are so many cooler accessories. I mean, I guess like for Ivy, you don't really have too many. But I swear I see this doll like used by people all the time. Is there like lore behind that doll? I swear there's got to be lore behind that doll or something. Um, okay. Going to be going for the Charles first. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, Ivy, Ivy early games are always like very odd because it, it, you never really know what they're gonna do. It really depends on who they want to chase. Now the thing is, if your team FAV, you need to three escape here minimum to force a round four. You cannot get drawed. If you, if you get if you get uh, two people killed, it's over. It's over for team FAV. And as somebody who really likes watching team FAV, ooh, 60 exactly. That's a bit rough for the prospector here. Ooh, red lighting a little bit. Nice, nice. Good work from the Ivy. He's just gonna loop around though. That's fine. But he he should be dead here, or taking a first hit. I should say. Yep, there's a first hit. Bonk. Yeah, I, this is this is just very standard stuff so far. Cyphers are actually looking pretty bad too. This is a really good start for Midai. Uh, Prospector's gonna have to do some crazy kiting here. You gotta be the, the blink is ready though. That's the issue for the Prospector, and he's cornered. He's cornered at triple pallet. And the Yith is, yep, Yith is going for the Aeroplanist, uh, possessing him, making it so it is even more difficult to you or to, to deco now. And yeah, Prospector just, oh my gosh, this Prospector. Oh my gosh, the pressure right now. What is this? So much pressure onto the Prospector, I swear. 88 corruption, blink right here. He flywheels the blink! But he's at 99 corruption, so it doesn't matter. Brother. Brother, what? That, oh! Can you stop, okay, he's dead. I was about to say, can you stop being so goaded? What was that? Uh, flywheeling the blink and then dealing with the corruption, unfortunately, still going down. That was a good kite though. The Cypher has actually recovered a little bit because of all those like, incredible plays. Oh my gosh, Nerisu. Incredible, dude. Three beautiful magnets, an amazing flywheel blink prediction against an ivy of all things. Like, did he hear? How did he do that? Did he just flywheel to the pallet? Did he flywheel expecting the blink? I don't know, like, what that kind of what that flywheel was. All right, careful now, Aeroplanist. Nice, nice, nice. No terror shock. And he is at 88. It looks like Aeroplanist is not going to be double downed, which is good. So he can go back to decode. 
Oh, but she is a full presence, and he's gonna die. Oh, but the mist! Yo, Nerisu! Calm down! Calm down, Nerisu! Oh, calm down! Oh my gosh! You're crazy! Does he make it to these pallets? I think he does. Oh, another miss spook! Drop both pallets. Yup, yup. Spooky. Oh my gosh! Three miss spooks! Yo, calm down! What is this game, dude? Oh my gosh! A fourth missed? Okay, he does go down. Brother! Four spooks. All missing. Is that just like, he's just, is he just winning 50 50s? Like, what is that? I need to look down to the bottom left, I swear. I was looking more at, like the ivy. Oh my gosh, that was incredible. Okay, full presence being used. Oh, wait. Mercenary going for the rescue. The last cipher is being decoded. But Midai is not pressing down the cipher. Teleport. Oh, no. That's going to be a free rescue out of the Norton. Your Yith is over there, but you're going to try and pressure it on the Cypher that the cheerleader is at. And she doesn't care. She's like, yeah, go ahead. Pressure my Cypher. Pressure my Cypher. Yeah. Because that gets an opportunity. Okay. Eh. She's not going to throw that down. She, she, she's got time. It's a full kite build cheater, which I guess is also a little dangerous for FAV since they do need a three escape. If the cheater is the one that gets hit... If she goes down, that's going to be a little dangerous because you can't borrow time her and put her back up. Aeroplanus is working on the Shack Cypher, possessing the Aeroplanus, and he just he's like, I'm out, bro. Charles is out. He does not want to do it without Full Presence because Full Presence, I believe, is up, I think. Let's see. Yeah, Full Presence is available for this Ivy to work with. She ideally wants to find the Prostor. The Prostor should just be hiding right now because if the Prostor gets found, it's GG's. He might be... I think he's in a locker, actually. Is he? Where is he? I don't see him. I, th I, thought I, th I thought he was in a locker. A locker would be a very safe place to hide. But it would also just be relying on your teammates to, you know, do the work for you. Uh, but I think he I think he is. I can't tell I can't tell what he's doing. He might I don't know if there's a locker over there either. Uh, no, he's just standing still. I think he might be in a locker. Huh. I think he's just relying on his teammate. Alright. Um Cyphers are being pressured down. Yeah, he's literally just standing still, you can see. Because you don't, you don't want him to get found out because he's dead on chair. I'm like 90% sure he's in a locker right now. Uh, but the thing is, his entire team, except for Cheer, is injured. He might... Yeah, he's, he's he's getting crows. He's getting crows, dude. Oh my gosh. But they have to play They have to play it like this, dude. They have to. Oh, it's just, this is a bit risky now. This is a bit risky. They're playing well and they're catching up on the Cyphers, but they're all injured. And she's going for the mercenary. Does does the mercenary... No, he can't make it in time. It's a mercenary. Blink? Ooh, blinks to avoid the... Or, no, sorry. Not, uh, elbow pad, what? Elbow pads to avoid a potential blink there. Very good from the mercenary. And this cypher is catching up, though. Watch out now. Okay, yeah, Char Charles just immediately just vaults to the window. She's doing her best to just pressure these two cyphers. Uh, okay, onto the aeroplanus now. Blink down to the aeroplanus, and they cannot pop in time. So somebody's going to have to go for the rescue, but the Cypher will be primed. It will be primed. Chitter can't go for it. It has to... Oh, this is really awkward. This is really awkward. Because there's no bar time on the Chitter, so Chitter has to pop the Cypher. Wait, but Narisu. Okay. Narisu got, uh, got out of the... Yeah, Chitter's going for the Cypher. This is so dangerous because she has no bar time. And I think she might know that. She might She might be taking advantage. She might just have to pop here. She is going to pop. Yeah, she is going to pop. Yeah, she has to. No bar time. Beep, beep. Okay, this is it. This is your, This is it. Oh, my gosh. What? Oh, but the cheer goes down. They rescued the aeroplanist. But she, ha she has to go. She has to go. Oh, my gosh. But the prostor's on the gate. He's already on the gate. They can get a three escape. I don't think, I don't think they make that. Oh, my gosh. They make it. They make it. It's a three escape. She teleports back. You can't let the shooter escape. Oh my gosh. They actually get a three escape. What is this? Uh, what is this? It's just draws, draws, draws. Dude, the first round, two 4Ks. The second round, two, three escapes. The third round, two, three escapes. We're going to round four. Oh my gosh. What is this set? What in the round four is this? What? What? Nightwatch, man? We're betting Nightwatch? Lawyer, mechanic, composer, and merc? Three decoders? 
Yo, what? And Thor's gone? Yo, what is this set? What is this set? Fool's Gold. Bot Tracy Composer Lawyer. Three decoders. They want a cipher rush. What? What? And then Fool's Gold? What is... I... What is... I'm speechless. I'm actually speechless. Triple decoder Fool's Gold. I... You know, I, with with this set, bro, anything can. Why are you betting Nightwatch though? What? Why not? Why not ban like Ann or Wax? Why Nightwatch? I mean, Nightwatch is good on this map, and he, he can snow. Uh, I, you know, I guess I guess these I guess I guess uh, these characters are pretty weak to Nightwatch. Not so much Lawyer, but Mechanic and Composer are pretty weak versus Nightwatch. But they're weak versus like everybody. So like I don't know. They really want to cipher us though. <laughs> oh man, I love I love watching Composer, but. Uh, Fool's Gold too. I mean, I, I don't know, dude. This is this is just such a bizarre set. I don't really know what to say. We're gonna see the Fool's Gold spawn hotel. Oh, you just chased the mechanic now. Yeah, that's probably the best first chase target. Well, I don't know, cause <sighs> lawyer and composer to code really fast. But I mean, mechanic is the easiest target to down. I guess I should say, especially for Fool's Gold, because you can't really. The bot body blocks are dangerous because you give them a lot of presence to work with. All right, this is, you can definitely tell this is round four because what is this? Bar time tied mercenary, flywheel tied mechanic, bar time knee jerk composer and lawyer while foolish is rocking the standard blink detention trump card. Oh my gosh. He's, he's not playing his bonbon, which is so weird. He's not playing his bonbon. I guess bonbon can't really deal with, is this just like anti bonbon or something? Throwing the axe instantly so he can just... Dang, that's really nice. There's the bot. Just hit the bot. Hit the bot. Hit the bot. Please hit the bot. Hit the bot! What? I mean, I guess you don't want the you don't want the bot Tracy to get away, but... I don't know. I mean, you want that presence, right? Okay. All right, all right. Throw the axe. This is a hit guaranteed right here. Because you can't bot body block. Oh, it's this mechanic skin. Yo, I actually like this mechanic skin. I didn't even know it existed. I was actually looking at skins like yesterday. I was looking through like the collection of uh, skins and whatnot. Nice chip on the mechanic. I actually really like this mechanic skin. I think it's super underrated. I like never see people play with it, but I think it's actually really cool. It's like actually like horror themed too, because there's not many. Ooh, nice, Yami, nice. Nice, Yami, okay. The fool's gold is cooking. I mean, mechanic couldn't really do much there. Oh yes, he is, because claustrophobia, interesting, yeah. I mean, the mechanic really couldn't do much there, but she has her bot out, which is going to be uh, a little scary for the Fool's Gold, because she can put that bot on a Cypher. And at the same time, he can also set up the rock onto the... Well, I guess, yeah, it's going to be on somebody else's Cypher, so... Going to clean up this pallet here. Oh, he does not have fast pallet breaking at all. Oh, my goodness. Okay, the mercenary's right there. Throw the axe at the mercenary. Nope, not yet. No, dude! I mean, I guess he's forcing the rescue a little early. But still, I don't know if I agree with that. Now you, yum, yep, there we go. Just hit the Merc. Hit the Merc, yeah, just hit the Merc. Just get the double down. Hold on, yummy, yummy, hold on. Yummy kind of cooking with the Fool's Gold. Wait a minute. Okay, look at that. Just for the little bit of distance. That's so crazy. That's a double down. The bot is decoding. Put a rock on the bot cipher. She's going to have to pull it off. She's going to pull it off. Okay, I think he chipped the bot. I think he chipped the bot. It didn't die. But um, unless, unless Mechanic controls it right here. That bot will go down, I think. Or did it go down? Wait, where's the bot? Did it go down? Wait, it did die! What? Wait, how? It should have only taken- Wait, did it take two? It took two chips? I thought- I thought it only took one. Oh my gosh. I guess it got hit with both chips. Dang! Alright, and now Composer- Wait a minute. Whoa! Why did we die on a Cypher? Merc? And now the Composer has to rescue. The Co-Opposer. Wait, this is looking really good for FAV. The decoders are just too weak. Composer, my boy. Oh my gosh, you self healed right in front of him. That's dangerous. Get in there, buddy. He's not, they're not, they're not even gonna rescue. He can't get in. Nice, that was good, that was good, that was good, that was good. He still has to take a chip though, yep. Full presence fool's gold, dude. Hold on, the fool's gold is cooking. And again, since you're a decoder, you can't really do anything versus him. He's at full presence. What is what is poor what is poor Frederick supposed to do? He can't do anything. He's at full pres, dude. He takes the window. He's gonna die in a corner. He can't do anything. Oh my gosh. 
the freaking telephone pole. Yeah, he's just dying in a corner. Dang, dude. He realized he just can't do anything. Wait. The bot is healing the mercenary. They're using the bot. They used up the mechanics bot to heal the mercenary. Yo, hold on. The, 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 the synergy. Wait a minute. Composer's being put into the chair. Excited decoding is active. Lawyer is decoding the final ciphers, and they're moving fast. But the rock is going to be put on the cipher to slow it down a little bit. And there's the rock. Okay. That's really good. I got to start doing that more. Where I, where I put a rock on a cipher and then call myself back with the, the pickaxe. I've, see, I, I've seen Fool's Gold do that against anti harassment where they'll chase the harasser away. And then just pickaxe all the way back. It's like a really good strategy for Fool's Gold to deal with harassers. Um, wait, teleporting to... Wait. There's nobody there. Foolish. You got... The, I mean, it's an after half rescue, but... Yo, that... What? Dude, that cipher from the composer is moving so fast. Look at that. Oh my gosh, and the lawyer's hard rotating, but he still has so much map. Oh no, foolish. I don't think that was the play, buddy. I don't think that was- the Oh, he finds out the mercenary, though. Wait, but the merc has no self-heal. Hmm. This is looking more like a draw now. This is looking like a hard draw. Okay, gonna go for the lawyer. The merc? The lawyer? The merc? You can't- You gotta decide now, because that composer is gonna- Okay. I think he's just pressuring the ciphers right now. Is he waiting for his trait, maybe? I, you know what? I think he's trying to delay the end game. He's trying to delay the end game. Put a, put a rock on the composer's cipher. Yeah, he, I don't think he's doing much besides delaying the end game as much as possible and waiting for his trait to come back. Okay. Composer's so scared. He doesn't. He's so scared of getting hit. Composer's dead on chair. Merc has no self-heal. I think that's what he wants to do. He's delaying the cipher from being popped so he can teleport to the composer and down him because the composer's at half. You can hit the lawyer here. Good hit. Composer's back on the thing. Okay, but... Oh my gosh, wait a minute. I think the composer can finish that cypher. Your rock is back up, but... Okay. Flying on over. Can you put the rock... You gotta put the rock on the composer right now. So you can teleport onto him. Teleport onto him. Okay. Or no, no, no. no. Put the rock on there. Both cyphers are basically primed. Be careful. Be careful. Teleport now. Teleport on composer. Or is he gonna save for endgame? Hmm... They just pop, they just pop in his face. Okay. I think the goal here is get the mercenary down. No, has no self heal. Teleport to the composer's gate. Because you know that's where he's going to be. Okay. Final elbow pad for mercenary. Come on. Let's see what you got. Let's see what you got. Yami, come on. I think he's, there is 3k potential here. There definitely is. And he's going for the lawyer for some reason. I don't know why he's going for the lawyer. Oh, my game. Nice. He walks to the pallet and he doesn't get it because lawyer is just a little bit too quick. He gets that, he gets that. Yeah, charge attack range is good. It's a draw, though. It's a draw. What? Brother, I feel like you just... I mean, he gets a draw. I guess that's fine. Still. Dang, you were doing so well. Man, poor Fool's Gold is just... He's just so weak. I feel like the Rock needs to recharge faster or something, dude. I don't know. I mean, 25 seconds is already not that bad. Maybe it should be like 22 or something. I don't know, dude. Fool's Gold just... It's so hard. It's so hard for him. I don't even know what he's supposed to, like, that was such a weak comp, too. I feel like he definitely could have 3k'd there. I don't know. All right, round four, second half. Opera Ivy Wax is the bands. And look at all the survivor bands. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be Melly. A pie, Melly. Oh, my gosh. Mercenary Seer Patient versus what's the final hunter going to be? The fish. Ooh, the fish. All right, here's the thing. It's going to be a detention insolence, uh... That's an insolent blink fish, most likely. But fish, fish is a pretty good draw hunter. So what happens here is if they get a draw, if Scars gets a draw here, uh, I think whoever's match was longer wins. I think I actually don't know. I forget how it works. I honestly forget how it works. I, it, it's dependent on the time. I'm pretty sure. Um, Melly's gonna spawn middle. What? She's, I mean, they know it's a Naiad. Melly spawn middle, patient restaurant, seer connected, and then mercenary over there. I feel like you'd rather have Melly up, seer where mercenary is, and then patient maybe at middle. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why they have this. I mean, I guess they really trust on Apai. And we know Apai on Melly is, like, amazing. Apai is an extremely good entomologist player. But eh, fish can catch up pretty fast. So we'll see how this goes. 
And yep, it is going to be detention, insolence, blink on the fish. We've got bar time tied on patient and mercenary. Bar time knee jerk on seer and melee. So full team with bar time. We're going to see the nymph award. Uh, it's the freaking doll again, bro. I mean, I think it's the same person. <gasps> is that Sophia Melly? It is. Oh my gosh, she's so cool. All right, she's going to rotate toward hotel, it looks like. All the fish is very, very quickly catching up. Melly's back on her bees right after she gets the knee jerk speed boost. Gonna probably drop off her bees right here in the entrance to slow down the fish, but she's still pretty fast. Dropping the pallet, vaulting said pallet, and that's a hit for some reason. That's stupid. That's incredibly stupid. What? Brother, she wasn't even near you. Why is Fish's hitbox so freaking good? Oh my gosh, this Melly's dead. She's literally dead. Oh my gosh, I hate Fish, dude. Why is her hitbox the freaking, like, god? Why is her hitbox is literally god, dude? It makes no sense. Poor Melly, dude. Poor Melly. And now Hotel's all used up. The pallets are gone. I mean, the pallet, well, the pallet, the good pallet, the god pallet is gone. And poor Melly's forced to rotate outward, and she gets the, yep. Now, now insolence triggers. The seer also, she doesn't get blinked on, but where do you go now? <laughs> you fought the pallet, and then are you just dead afterwards? Are you just gonna die here? Oh, Melly. And your bees. She's gonna hit all your bees. I can't watch, dude. Make it. <sighs> I'm so mad. Dude, that first hit shouldn't have hit. That was knee jerk speed, too. And she still hit. Oh my gosh. Nine's hitbox is so stupid. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, my Melly bias gets me fired up. Anyways. She, th this is still a drawed position though. This is still definitely a drawed position because she went down to blink. The patient's gonna hook on in. And he, uh, he messed up his hook, okay. Uh, I mean, not, not nearly as badly as I have messed up my hook before. Oh, you'll be careful. Ooh, that's scary. And she's gonna just, okay, patient. Yeah, he just hooks away to front the double down. Well, Melly is gonna try and kite this out here a little bit. It's gonna be hard because this fish is almost at full presence. Pulls back the trident and forcing the poor Melly to transition. Um, we go back into our bees. We have a little bit more bees to work with. Not that much. Come on, Melly. You can win. I know you can. Oh, she has full presence. She has full presence, I think. Shove her. 90. Okay. And yeah, it goes down to the water. Yep. Okay. Whoa, these ciphers are kind of slow. What the heck? And no more bees on Melly. Oh my gosh. The ciphers are moving kind of slow. And the melee, the melee is basically dead. Like these, ci these ciphers are a little slow. They already used up the owl. There's there's tide on the mercenary, which will buy a good amount of time. It, it'll buy time until accelerate is okay. Hi, buddy. Dang, the frame one rescue. She hits the mercenary. Okay. Hitting the mercenary does give Melly a chance. All right, this is, this is it, Melly. Wait, why is she already at 72? Hello? I guess she pulled back the trident right there just to get a ton of uh, water onto Melly. All right, Melly, come on now. Vaulting the pallet, getting the speed boost. Nice, nice. She has a window over here to work with as well. But it's it's yeah, that's GG. She's dead. Uh, yeah, cause you take that you take that window vault or you take the freaking dash hit. It's it's hard. Oh, Melly, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Melly. I'm gonna cry. Poor Melly. Dude, that first hit just shouldn't have connected, dude. That's so dumb. Like, the knee-jerk speed is supposed to, like, get you out of that, but Naya's hitbox is just, like, god, bro. It's the fastest thing alive. It has insane range. Oh, it's just so good, dude. Wait, she's kind of lost. Oh, no, she's guarding the last cypher. The last cypher is here. They're forced to open up a new one. Okay. Well, she's in a, she's in a very, like, standard position. This has been a very standard game. Like, both, both people who came in for the rescue are injured. The Cypher is basically done. The first person goes down. This is, like, the most standard Identity 5 game of all time. Uh, but they're double rushing the last Cypher, and she's not applying any more Cypher pressure. She is going to toss the Trident. No? Okay, she is going to go all the way over here to the other people. Yep. Pressure on this Cypher. But the Mercenary is on that Cypher, though. She's pressuring down two Cyphers. They're, she's just delaying the inevitable. Yeah. Because Mercenary gets back on that Cypher. He's going to try and run away. He's just hiding now. He's just hiding. Yep, just hiding. He still has two elbow pads to work with. Yeah, they're, they're just gonna... He's, she's probably gonna try and water down. Okay, missing the dash. That's good. Oh, they just pop. Okay. Oh. Wait, what? 
Oh, she wants to switch off the mercenary. Okay, her blink is ready. Her blink is ready. This is this is just a draw, dude. It's just a draw every time. She spots out the seer. No, she doesn't. Spot, she doesn't find the seer. Yo, go for the, go for the people on the gate. What are you doing, fish? I'm confused. Okay, she's dashing to the patient. That's good. And now you just blink down, and he's dead. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's just it's a draw, I think. Wait, so wait, who wins? They get out, right? Yeah, they get out. So who wins? I think I. Uh. I think it's I think it's based on time, dude. They literally draw every game. What? How, how? How do they match each other so well? I've never seen a game go to this. I don't think I've ever seen a game literally go to round four and it still stays drawed. All right, so those are the times for the games. I'm not sure which side is which. Oh, okay, I guess FAV wins. Okay, so it's it's the shorter game, right? Or no? No, the survivors lasted longer against the Fool's Gold than Scars did against... Uh, or wait, no, no, FAV, no, it was the shorter game. They lasted less time. Or wait, no, I guess maybe it's, maybe it's, uh, the game is fa done faster, so that's, like, better than longer, I guess? Yeah, because the, the Fool's Gold game is longer. I think, I don't know how it works. I don't know how it works. I, they win based on time, though. I think, I think whatever the faster game's based on the survivors is, is the one that wins, I think? Yeah, I, I, th I think that's it. I think that's it. Anyways. What a weird set. FAV, congratulations. I'm glad you guys won because I do like rooting for you, but still. That was one of the weirdest sets of all time, dude. That was crazy. Just draws throughout the entire thing. And yeah, that's gonna be it for today, everybody. There actually is one more thing I do want to check out, and that is because the day has reset as I'm filming this, and I do want to see uh, what the anniversary tale for today is for day four. Let's see here. Oh, it's Cheerleader. We got 100 apples, and Cheerleader is here. I once thought there was only laughter in the castle until that monster appeared, growling at me with the face of my father. At the end of the story, the once happy family had turned to hell in an instant. Oh, wait, yeah, this is about, like, Chudler's father being, like, a horrible person or something. That's so sad. And, yeah, the same thing when her, her brother got injured on the horse or whatever. Yeah, okay. Interesting. So, yeah, that, that's when Ch this, okay, yeah, this is This is around when I joined, when the crossover uh, happened and then when Chudler was released. This is, like, right around when I joined, so... Interesting. But yeah, that's gonna be it for real for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.